Hello and welcome to Spiceworks Administrator course. Today we are going to be uh, setting up a lab environment before we do the initial setup and configuration for Spiceworks itself. So today we are going to discuss that. We are going to be using VirtualBox. Now, I want to say this in the beginning of the video. If you are brand new and you're just listening to this term, VirtualBox, what is he talking about? You definitely need to go back and go to the site jobskillshare.org and take the course, help desk support entry level to specialist. This is for entry level people that are watching this video for the first time because this is advanced video we are not going to do anything basic on virtual box so that's that's done over here you can go to the section virtualization and that will define some of the theory diag diagrams and just kind of like lab environment in there so jumping back let's configure the domain controller on virtual box but what environment am i using so when I click on my computer, this is the computer that I'm using. It's a 64-bit system. It has 12 gigs of RAM. 12 gigs of RAM is enough. Even if you have 8, that's fine. But I would prefer 12 just to, you know, you can add more clients and play around with Spikesworks installation. So this video can also help people, even not just Spikesworks. I mean, that could be anything with VirtualBox domain controller environment where you can test any other software. So let's go ahead and... Um, one check one more thing that another thing in a real world environment that you don't want to put a domain controller environment dscp dns and everything in the same network so let's say if you're if you're in the work area you would check ip config and you don't want the same ip this ip address you don't want to give it you don't want to put another domain on that same network right so th the way to do this is to you go to the virtual box and go to file preferences go to network and add click on this little plus sign and it will add a net network so what it will do you can see when you put your mouse on it it will automatically create all these addresses that can be used in your internal network so that whatever you do in here will not affect anything outside so I have a two server server sorry server 2012 r2 running here and it's basically the whole installation is done this is why I said that in the beginning that I'm not going to show anything basics in this this is something that you need to learn and help this so that's done and I have a Windows 7 both are just basic installation is done like server installation ISO downloaded all that stuff is done now I already named this server DC domain controller that's the only thing that I did and restarted it okay then I went ahead and added IP config all and I basically see that there's a, a new IP, uh, the address is different so that confirmation is done now you also confirm that there's no domain controller on this running so that's what we're doing right now let's go ahead and give it a static IP address go to the network Ethernet and actually I can just go from here change adapter right click here go to properties go to TCP IPv4 and here we need to give it that address so that that will make it a static IP address so the IP address for this is 10.02.4 so it's 10 we're gonna put 2 and forgive me because I'm using a very different method here and I have to just jump using my mouse actually to get this working so it's 10.0.2.4 and then the subnet is 255.255 and 255 and then you can also see the default gateway right here is 10.2.1 so it's 10.2.1 here you can also use uh, the same IP address on the top but if that somehow gets changed then this is a little a uh, way to you know whenever this IP changes it will not affect anything and also we'll add another um, Google DNS just for fun you know we're going to add that and now we're gonna click OK now this machine have a static IP address okay and that's see that went away so I know that I have an internet connection going on so now what I need to do is to just do the uh, configuration to make this a domain controller so I'm gonna go ahead and click on manage and after that I'm gonna click on add roles and features and I'm gonna click on next next and click on next there and now I'm gonna click on Active Domain um, Services, Active Directory Domain Services, add feature here, and I'm going to click Next here, and then Next, and then Next, and click on Install here. Now, what's going to happen that it's just going to go through some of the setup. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this video for a few seconds, and then I'll 
All right, once that's done, you just click on promote the server to domain controller. We're going to click on add a new forest root domain name. We're just going to call it, let's say, job skill share dot local. That's right, job skill share dot local. Click next. Here we are going to give it a password. Just wait a second for it to finish. There you go. I always tell people that this is not something, you know, if, if you're doing in a test environment, yes, you can just go around and just do everything like crazy way. But when you're doing a real domain controller, that requires a lot of planning. So this is now it's done in a real world if you are deploying a full domain controller. Just uh, a quick note. NetBIOS, so here you can use like, you know, something just the initial for I'll just use like a headquarter kind of thing. I mean, it already picked job skill share, so let's just keep that over there. Um, we're going to click next and finish this installation. And after this, it will restart. We'll click next here. Just in case you want to do this on a PowerShell, you can see the whole script here. Um, and then click next and install this. So after this, it will restart and we'll have a domain controller running. So then we will add our Windows 7 to the domain controller and then we can install Spiceworks. And that's how a lot of people use in the real world. I mean, it's really useless if you're using a Spiceworks on a workgroup environment because you're going to need uh, a password for each computer. And that's now how it's used for. You can use it, but it, I don't know who would use it for that. But most of the time, if you are doing the Spiceworks installation, then you're doing it on this type of environment. Okay, so let me wait for this to finish and we'll come back with another step. All right, you will be signed out, that's fine. It will sign out right now and restart and you see I have a domain control, AD services, everything is running. So now after this, I'm ready to go. I just need to add Windows 7 to the, this domain controller now and then I have a full uh, environment ready to test anything, any software that requires a domain controller type of environment. Okay, so it's starting right now. While that's starting, let's go ahead and start our Windows uh, 7 machine and set up some of the basic things in there. So um, we're going to get it started. And there you go, it's the first, like I said, first screen. Uh, we'll just call it staff and just click next. I'm not going to name it now because we probably will just name, use the domain controller once it's ready. Make sure your timing is correct. I am using Eastern time. So I'll use that. And on domain control, this is also important that it should be correct. You will have some issues, connections, and, you know, finding a domain controller and stuff like that. So. Here is our domain controller and here's our new machine that we are trying to add it to the domain controller. And this is why I'd say you need more than 12 gigs or about 12 gigs because right now at least it's working even though I'm recording everything it's still I'm being able to function pretty much normal. If you have a very less memory trust me you're gonna have issues. You're gonna click on here and nothing will move and it'll take seconds and probably you'll give up by then. Let me close this just to make it faster. So both machines are on right now. You see it's asking me for to pick a network, so that's good. Just in case for troubleshooting, if you don't see this and you see something like, you know, X or it's you're not getting a good result, you can always go to your virtual box. This is good for troubleshooting. You can go to the temp, let's say this is a machine, go to the network change this to something else like for example change it to, sorry not this one to bridge adapter and then get it back to the net again it basically disconnects the whole network um, um, adapter and then it reconnects it again get the IP address so now we have uh, that also running and just to check it out see what's going on I'm just gonna click here go to CMD let's ping 10. So, uh, two, I think there was dot four. Yeah, so that's a domain controller. Right now we're getting a response from that. That's a good thing because 
when you don't get a response there's something else going on you need to troubleshoot that first um, so let's give it a try before we do anything else before we do anything else let's go ahead and go to change and try to add it to a domain controller see what happens in there so our domain controller name is job skillshare dot local remember we named it dot local okay job skillshare dot local is not working so go to details and you can see these are the another troubleshooting things that you guys can see there's one thing that I see is something not right and that's getting this right here now what you need to do is to fix this you need to on this environment you need to make sure because it's get grabbing a DNS from my external uh, network so what we need to do is to force it to use a domain uh, DNS because that's the DNS that we want to use right so you need to go to right click on your network and sharing here go to local area connection go to details sorry not details properties go to IPv4 and here we need to give it the server IP address, the domain controller IP address, okay? So that's uh, 2.4, and we also added the 8.8.8.8. So now we're gonna click on OK and close this. And if I go back now, let's see, and this is a good for our troubleshooting, because a lot of people see this, everything works so smoothly when people record everything. And then people have all these other issues and uh, things don't work so this is really good for people maybe you might having some other issues and you find out oh this is how you fix it so we're gonna go ahead and try that now because since we changed the DNS BAM there you go but I don't want to add this yet I need to go back to my domain I know this is working it's talking to the domain right now domain controller I need to add one account before I do this I don't need this come on um, let me go back to my virtual box see so many things are open right now okay here's my domain controller I'm gonna log in and I'm going to add another account another domain controller admin account so then I can do my uh, stuff on like help this has a domain control so I don't want to use administrator here just to make things easier you know and also to check uh, if your domain controller is working correctly so we're going to go ahead and open that server manager is getting open we're going to go to tools and go to active directory users and computers still thinking about things still getting started and all that stuff is coming up right now okay there you go that's our domain and we're going to add a new user here we're going to call it help us that's fine and we're going to the user login will be help us next and now we're going to say password never change so then whenever I do other things now like spikes work administrations and all that this is going to be our domain admin now so password never expired and click OK finish and now what you need to do is to go to user and I'll right click on this properties and I'm gonna say member of domain administrator domain administrator there you go so now I can go back here and use that account to add this machine to the domain administrator so let's see there you go local joined so now this machine is joined guys this is it after this we are going to start our spiceworks installation because this is what is it's needed in a real world environment this is how things are to double check if this machine is on there you go to computers and there you go that's it for this video and I'll see you guys in our Spiceworks installation. Thank you. Make sure you like this video and also be a part of our uh, site, jobskillshare.org.